Hello and welcome to our casual booking webinar. In the next 30 minutes, you will learn how to create your casual booking T-sheet from scratch. We will guide you through the basic setup procedures and outline how the various settings can be adapted for your golf club requirements. We have received many questions for this webinar and at the end of the presentation, we will have time to answer some of these for you. First of all, when you log into Club B1, the first thing we need to do is enable the casual booking T-sheet. You can do this by going into Club, Settings, and on the left hand side, there's a button that says Hub and Casual Booking. In here, if you scroll down, there is a big button that says Enable Casual Booking. Once enabled, the system puts the T-sheet button across the main menu hub at the top. In here, you will be able to access your T-sheet going forwards. But first of all, we need to configure it. So let's go back to club and settings. And on the left hand side, we've got our hub and casual booking settings. We are gonna work through step by step all of these booking settings in here. To start with, let's start with T-sheet settings. First of all, you need to determine the T-sheet start time. In my case, I'm going to leave it at 7 a.m. The T-sheet end time, and in my case, I'm going to leave it at 6.30 a.m. But to change the times, you can simply move the slider up and down. Then you can choose your tee time interval. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to change that to eight minutes. You also have the option for tee time interval two. You can leave this blank. And in my case, because I've set interval one as eight minutes, my tee sheet will start at seven o'clock, then go to 7.08, then go to 7.16 and so on. We have known some clubs to have an interval two time as seven minutes. So what will happen in this scenario is the T-sheet will start at 7 a.m., then it will go to 7.08, then it will look at interval two and go to 7.15 and so on. This means your T-sheet can pivot on a 15 minute axis. Let's leave this blank and we'll just leave it as eight. Scrolling down, the next setting you can choose is your players per tee time. This is where you can determine whether you have two balls only, whether you have three balls only, or whether you increase it to four balls. Later on in the presentation, I will cover how to enable four balls, but possibly at certain times, restrict that down to two balls only or three balls only. Scrolling down, the next setting you can choose is to show the sunrise and sunset. This is simply a yes or a no. And what it will do is it will show the, sun, the sunrise and the sunset time on the T-sheet for the members and the visitors. The next setting we have is allow members to join partially booked tea times. Again, this is a simple yes or a no. If it's set to no, it means that if a member books a tea time, no other member will be able to join that tea time once it's confirmed. If it's set to yes, it means that if you have a two ball booked and it's into a four ball slot, two other members could potentially join that tea time. The same setting underneath, but it applies to visitors. Again, this is a simple yes or no, and you can determine whether visitors can join partially booked tea times. Scrolling down again, you now have a setting where you can determine the number of days in advance members can book. So simply put in here, the number of days you want your members to be able to book in advance. This is inclusive of, if we have it set to five days, this means that your members can book from today, five days in advance. There is also another setting here for visitors and you can determine how far visitors can, can book in advance. So in my case, I'm just gonna set this to three days and give members more priority. The next setting down is 
time booking becomes available. Now, this is the time of day that the T-sheet becomes available for, in my case, five days ahead. So let's set this to 7 p.m. Then we have the front line playing time, which you can determine. In my case, let's leave it as 10, two hours, 10 minutes. And the back line playing time is two hours. That's fine, we, you can change those depending on your club. Scrolling down again, we've got the minutes between bookings. Now this setting refers to how many minutes the system will lock out a member for once they have made a, a tea booking. So in this case, we have it set to five, which means after a member makes a booking, they cannot make another booking for five minutes. Now a lot of clubs will have this set to an hour. So once you've made a booking, you cannot make another booking for an hour. We have known clubs to have this set at 24 hours, so it means that once a member makes a booking, it will lock them out of the system until the same time tomorrow. This setting also applies to player B, perhaps player C and D in the T booking. So if the lead booker books player B in as well, it will also lock out player B for that set amount of time. Scrolling down, we also have maximum future bookings per member. This is like a bank limit and allows members to book, in my case, up to three tea times, and it will not let any other mem it will not let the member book another tea time until they have used one of their three times. Then there's some settings here which refer to the competition side of Club V1. When you create a competition in the system with online booking, it will block out those tea times on the casual tea sheet. However, some clubs do zone competitions where they may have a morning time and an afternoon time for members to book into. Now, if you flip this, this setting here to yes, it means that you can allow casual bookings between those zones. So if you have a, a zone in the morning from uh, 9 a.m. until 11 a.m., and maybe another zone at 1 p.m to 2 p.m., you have a two hour void in the middle from 11 to 1 p.m. where you may want to allow casual bookings. So if you change this setting here to yes, that means casual bookings can play in those times. If you leave it as no, the T-sheet will be reserved for competition use only. The next setting also refers to competitions. Allow casual bookings between pushed competition times. Again, this is a simple yes or a no. Some clubs will set up a competition from seven in the morning until 11 a.m. However, the competition may only be booked up until say 9.30. If you set this to yes, it means that you can release tea times onto the tea sheet and those unbooked competition times can then be used for casual golf. The next setting down is make T-sheet view only via Club V1 Members Hub and PSI. If the setting is set to no, it means that your members can see the T-sheet and they can make bookings. If this is set to yes, it means that your members can view the T-sheet, but they cannot make bookings. A good setting there for clubs that use a T-sheet members don't book tea times, they can then see when the tea sheet is busy and obviously can plan their, their golf around that. The last setting we have in this section is enable multiple start points. Some clubs operate a two tea start and in this case you would say yes to here and then you can determine your start point one and your start point two. In my case I've got the first tee and the tenth tee and I can then simply add in how long it takes a one ball to play the front nine, might be 90 minutes, a two ball, might be 100 minutes, a three ball, 110 minutes, and a four ball, two hours. And you can fill out the remaining settings. Once you're happy with everything, 
At the bottom, you can simply hit save and that will confirm your T-sheet settings. The next thing to do, once you've confirmed your T-sheet settings, is to start generating tea times. Underneath, we have the tea time generation. And in here, you can start generating your tea times. To start with, I am going to generate tea times from today because we've, it's a blank system. We've started the tea sheet from today. No tea times exist. So let's choose today's date. And the end date, we can go as far in advance as we want. But the tea time generation is a really good tool for creating seasonal tea sheets. Some clubs will want tea times that go from seven in the morning to seven at night all throughout the summer. Obviously in the darker days, in the winter, you may want a reduced tea sheet. So you can then create another batch of tea times from say October the 1st until March, where the first tea time might be eight o'clock in the morning and run until three, four o'clock in the afternoon. In my case, in this example, we are going to create tea times until the end of June. It's pulling through the settings we've created on our tea sheet settings. So my start time is seven in the morning until 6.30 with eight minute intervals. Okay, if you want to change them, you can do so here as well. And if we press generate batch of tea times, the system says tea times generated successfully. Excellent. So now we can go to the tea sheet at the top using the tea sheet tab. Now we've generated tea times the system will show us the tea times available all the way until the end of the day in our eight minute intervals. Excellent. We can go to tomorrow and it will show the tea times that are available tomorrow. And we can go to the next day and so on and so on and so on. If we use the calendar, we can then look ahead to any day we want. We've only created tea times up until the 30th of June. So if we move ahead until the 1st of July, the system is showing no tea times exist. So what will happen in Club D1 when you log in for the first time is a warning message will pop up three weeks before uh, the last tea time and say you need to generate more tea times. So let's go back into our settings. back into the booking settings here. Okay, so that is the tea sheet settings and tea time generation. We're gonna come back to the tea time generation in a bit more detail later. But first, let's just walk through the remaining settings we have here. General settings, in here, we can enable casual booking on the PSI. So for members to make a booking, they can use the Club V1 app and the Club V1 hub Alternatively, you can enable casual booking via the PSI as well. This is a sim simple yes or no. So by clicking yes, that means your members can also go to the PSI in the clubhouse and book a casual golf tea time. Towards the bottom here, you can include an email signature and terms and conditions. This refers to the visitor booking side of the system. So every time a visitor makes a booking, you can include an email signature here and you can include your terms and conditions. So in my case, I've got some, some uh, terms and conditions about how to cancel a tea time and some play safe rules. Very straightforward. These are just simple text boxes and you can just add text in like so. Moving down, the next setting is courses. And in here, you can enable multi-course booking if you have two courses at your golf club. In my example, I've only got one course, but if we enable the red course as well and press save, what this does, if we go back into booking, we basically have to start again with all of our settings. So if we go back to T-sheet settings, we now get another course here and we will need to go through and create the same settings or different settings 
before we can do anything in the system. We'll also need to generate tea times for the second course as well. And you may have noticed there is a course drop down here and we can now generate tea times for the red course. Just to show you how that looks from the tea sheet perspective, if we go back to here, we've got our tea times for the Woody Lynx golf course. Top right hand corner, you can flip them between your different golf courses. So if we go to the red course, no tea times exist because we haven't created any tea times. We've seen clubs create nine hole courses there. So you can book an 18 hole course or a nine hole course. Uh, some clubs have even created their practice facilities there. So it allows members to book times on the chipping green or at the range. Let's go back to our courses. I'm just gonna disable multi-course booking for now. If we go back into our booking menu here, the next setting we have moving down is green fee rates. So in here, you can create your different green fees. In my example, I've created weekend AM, weekend PM, weekday, twilight, and member guest. And when you create your green fee, by simply clicking on the add new rate plus icon at the bottom, you can then determine what category that green fee is available to. Visitors, but it also might refer to membership categories. For example, five days, a weekend green fee here will also apply to a five day category because they are not seven day members and they will need to pay a green fee at the weekend. Okay, then you can determine how much it is for a one ball, how much it is for a two ball, how much it is for a three ball, and how much it is for a four ball. Okay. The other setting you have is this column here, member guest rate. Again, this is a simple yes or a no. And when you, when you say yes to that, you can give your green fee rate a name here, and then you can determine the rate it is for a member guest. When a member books in a guest, in my case, it will add the green fee rate of 15 pounds. If they book another guest in, it will just add another 15 pounds. Just to show you how the setup process works, when we click on add new rate, we can give it a name. You can then choose the category. Visitor is fine. Is this going to apply to member guest? Yes or no. Then you can choose your one ball rate, two ball rate, three ball rate, and four ball rate. Now you may want to give a four ball a discount. So in this case, instead of going in incrementals of 20, we could add 70 on the end and that gives a special price to the four ball. Excellent. The next setting down is green fee rules. In here, you can determine the time of day these green fee rates that we've just created apply. So let's create one now. By clicking add new rule, you can then choose which golf course, in my case only one, and which rate we are going to work on. So let's use the weekend AM as our example. The system is then asking you, please specify which days of the week this green fee rate can be used. So we've chosen our weekend AM, and of course, we are going to leave Saturday and Sunday ticked. Then you can specify, specify the start and date ranges. So in my case, we're gonna to start today because that's when we're setting up our T-sheet and uh, when it's going to end. The system always defaults to one year's time, but if you wanted to, you can increase that or you could just have it for the summer. We've only created tea times until the end of June anyway. So let's just do until the 30th of June. Of, what, of course, the green fee will expire after that, that time. So our green fee rate here is weekend AM. It applies on Saturdays and Sundays, which is perfect. At the bottom, you can also apply a start time and an end time. 
Now, because this is an AM green fee, the start time here will need to be 7 AM. The end time we're going to put as 11.59. Okay, and press save. Excellent. If we add another rule for weekend PM, we need to do the same. Just change the dates to the end of June. Now the start time here will be from 12 o'clock. We don't want any overlap here. So we had to put 11.59 and 12 in this case. If we put 12 o'clock and 12 o'clock, the system doesn't like the overlap and it won't allow us to create the rule. So we're gonna put 12 o'clock here and the end time, let's do 6.30. And save. Perfect. You'll need to do the same for your week, weekday AM, weekday PM, twilight, whenever you're different, Green fee rates apply. Just one more before we move on. We also need to distinguish when a member guest rate applies. Now you might have different member guest rates at different times of the day. However, in my example, it's 15 pound whenever. So what I'm gonna do, member guest rate applies Monday to Sunday from today. And we'll do it until the end of June again. And it's going to apply seven in the morning until 6.30 at night. Brilliant. So when now when a member books in a guest, it will trigger this rule here and apply the 15, green, 15 pound green fee rate that we've already created. The next one down is T-sheet reservations. Now in here, this gives you the flexibility to add in reservations for tea closures, for members roll-ups you might have, where booking isn't required. Okay, so just to show you how this works, we can add new custom reservation and we can click on the plus icon here. First of all, let's just give it a name. So we're going to have members members roll up. Obviously it applies to my golf course. Public message, this is what members will see when they go to make a booking on the tee sheet. They will see this message when the tee times are blocked out. Reserve for members roll up. You have the reservation status here. Now by leaving it as enabled, it means the rule is turned on but you can disable it, which means the rule will be turned off. It will still exist in the system, but you have the power to disable it for a special reason. Let's flip it back to enabled. Then you have the reserve slot. <clears throat> so in this example, I want to reserve all four T slots so that no bookings can be made. However, in here, you do have the ability to reserve off three slots, two slots, or one slot. So this does give you the flexibility to determine when uh, it's two balls only at certain times of the day. Maybe it's three and four balls only at certain times of the day. The next setting down is the days of the week this reservation will apply to. So my roll-up applies on a Monday morning every Monday. So we're just gonna leave Monday ticked. And we're gonna do from today, and again, we're just gonna change it to the end of June. And at the bottom, you can choose your start and end time. So my roll up starts at eight in the morning and lasts to 10 in the morning. Perfect, let's save. So that means between the hours of eight in the morning and 10 in the morning every Monday, my tea sheet is not available to be booked because it is for our members roll up. Other reservation types, let's just do one more. We're gonna have on a, every Wednesday morning, we're gonna say it's two balls only.
Okay, so the same settings apply. The reserve slot count this time we're going to use as two. So it's going to block out players three and players four, meaning only players one and two can be booked. Now this is going to apply on a Wednesday. Again, just changing our dates here. And the start time, let's have it as 10 in the morning until midday. And save. Excellent. So let's go and have a look at how that affects the T-sheet. So we go back to T-sheet at the top. We've created a rule for Monday mornings and Wednesday mornings. So let's go and have a look at Monday. You can see from the hours of eight in the morning until 10, it's reserved for members roll up. Members cannot make a booking, which indicates this red circle with a line through it. No bookings can be made because we reserve all four slot counts. Excellent. Now let's have a look at Wednesday. Where we have reserved it for two balls only from 10 a.m. So let's scroll down. You can now see two balls only. However, this time we do have a green plus and it'll allow us to add a booking for player one and two. In like so. Excellent. Starts to give us a bit more flexibility on the T-sheet and a bit more control. Let's go back to our settings. The next setting down we have is T-sheet restrictions. In the T-sheet restrictions, this then refers back to our membership categories and visitor category that we have set up in the system. So it gives you the power to determine when different membership categories can and can't play. Again, you just need to work through the settings here. So first of all, choose your golf course, then you can choose your category. So in my case, I've got five day, seven day, junior under 10 and visitors. A good example to start with would be the five day. Everyone knows that five days don't normally play Saturdays and Sundays. They will need to pay a green fee. So by choosing five day, um, the next setting down is restriction applies to members guests only, which we'll come back to because this allows you to turn off the ability for your members to book member guests, but it will still allow them to make a booking. Let's just work through the five day first and we'll come back to that. Again, you can choose whether the setting is enabled or disabled. The hide slots drop down. If this is set to yes, it means that the slots that the category is restricted from booking, they will not be able to see the tea times even exist. However, if this is set to no, they will be able to see them, but they won't be able to, they won't be able to make a booking. Then you need to tick the days that you wish to stop this category from booking. So we've got our five day membership category here. We're going to untick the days of the week and leave Saturday and Sunday ticked. Again, we've just got our date ranges, end of June, now, because it's a five day category and we don't want to play at any time on the weekend, you can simply leave the start and end time like so and press save. Excellent. So the five day category cannot play at the weekends. You also might want to do the same for visitors. Maybe visitors can't play before 12 o'clock on a Saturday and Sunday. These are all settings you can determine. So let's do that. Let's create that rule. Visitors, in my case, we will leave them for the weekend and they can't play before 12 o'clock. And press 
save. And that just adds in that setting again, and you can just keep building and building. Now, some clubs have asked, how do you restrict members from booking member guests in? So the rule here, if we go back into add new restriction, we may want our seven day members or five days. And then, uh, then you can also choose the setting here, restriction applies to members guests only. So this means that they can book at any time, but at certain times they cannot book member guests in. And again, you can just choose the times of when they can't book member guests in. So let's say they can't, my seven day members cannot book a member guest in any day of the week before 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay, let's change our date ranges again. And press save. So that means seven day members can book, but they can't book member guests in between those times. We have a couple more settings to go through. We have messages. Now this section here allows you to define messages that will appear on your T-sheet. Members and visitors will be able to see these messages. Just to show you how this works, if we click on the plus icon, you can simply add in your message here. Please report to the pro shop on arrival at the golf course. Again, if you have multi-course enabled, you can choose which golf course this message applies to. And then you can also choose the days of the week and the times this message will appear. In my case, I want this message to appear at all times. So I'm going to leave all of the days ticked and I'm going to leave the dates as they are. I'm going to press save. So that message is like a permanent message now and will appear for members and visitors when they make a, a booking. However, you may want seasonal messages or weekly messages, for example. So what we can do is we could add a message here, which could say course, course maintenance week. Now this is gonna apply Monday to Friday from Monday the 8th of June until Friday the 12th, okay? Now that message will appear and after Friday the 12th of June, it won't show anymore. The next setting down is booking types. And in here, the system will allow you to color code and create new booking types. For example, let's create our first booking type as member. And you can choose the color. Let's have our members in a nice sky blue. Add new booking type. We want visitor. We'll have more of a red, I think. Other examples you might want to have are reciprocals, courtesy. And like so, and you can just keep building the booking types into the system. If we go back to our settings, the last setting we have is services. In here, we can create our different services that are available to be booked by the members. For example, they might be buggies, they might be trolleys, they might be club hire, and in some cases they might be caddies. So if we go to add new service, we'll call it buggy. You can then determine how many you have at the golf club. Let's do, let's just do one in our example. And the rate is going to be 10 pounds. Okay, save, excellent. 
Obviously, you can build in the extra services that you may have, like I said, club hire, caddies, trolley hire. So that concludes all of our setup. I'm pretty happy with everything there. Um, so let's just go to the T sheet in Club V1 and have a look at what can be done from a back office point of view. So we've got our tea times here. You will see as you go through, as it's a live environment, you will see bookings being made and confirmed bookings. Okay. To make a booking on the tea sheet, you can simply click on the green plus and make a booking. In here, you can add a booking, you can add a reservation, which is just blocking off the tea time, or you can add a function, which may be like a, a golf society or a club match. It goes into a lot more detail uh, where you can add in charges, numbers, contact details, those kind of things. So while we're in here, if we go to add booking, because we've enabled it for four balls, we can now add in up to four players into our booking. Let's book me in again, like so. If we wanted to add a visitor, member guest, for example, we can click on add visitor here. You can input their details if you have them, which is great, or alternatively, you can press quick fill. If you press add guest, that will add the guest in like so. And the system recognizes the time of day and the green fee rate and pulls through the member, member guest green fee rate here. Excellent. Scrolling down again, you have your services, which we've just created. If we go into here, we can choose buggy hire and our quantity. The system's saying it's available. Fantastic. £10 gives us a total green fee of £15 plus £10 equals 25 and we can press save booking. And that adds it in like so. Again, from a back office point of view, we can click on the booking. You can colour code them like we had earlier. Let's just colour code it as member and press save and that will automatically turn the booking blue. Fantastic. Just to show you how the services aspect works in the system, because we've programmed in one buggy, if we make another, bu another booking here with a buggy, let's have Joseph playing on his own, choose buggy hire, we cannot select that buggy because it is not available. So it prevents double bookings for buggies and other services. Excellent. So in terms of the overall setup of the system and T-sheet settings, that covers all of the basics. We now have some time for some questions. Question one is from King's Golf Club. And they've asked, can you limit the number of tee times per player? The answer to that is yes. If you go into your T-sheet settings, in here, you have the setting of maximum future bookings per member. Now you can set this to however many you like, and that will limit the number of times players can book. Side by side with that, clubs do like to add in minutes between bookings, to prevent somebody from booking three times back to back. Question two is from Chatsworth Golf Club and they've asked, how do you generate and regenerate batches of tee times? Now you may need to do this because you're changing your minute intervals. And in my case, we've set it up as eight minutes so let's use the example of changing that to 10 minutes. So we need to go into our tea time generation and at the bottom here, we can delete batches of tea times. So let's delete from Monday, the 1st of June, and we'll do the whole of June. Okay, and we're gonna delete every single tea time so we can leave those tea times as they are. 
press delete and at the top you'll get a message that says tea times deleted successfully. If there are existing bookings in the system, this will show a failure message and you will need to delete your existing bookings before you can move on. Now we've deleted our tea times from tomorrow, no tea times exist. We can then regenerate the tea times with possibly new minute intervals, which we can change here. Let's do from the 1st of June until the end of June. We'll leave the start and end times as the same, but this time we're going to change our minute intervals to 10. Press generate, and again, that says generated successfully. We'll have a quick look at the T-sheets to make sure everything's okay. So we've got our eight minute intervals from today, but if we go to tomorrow, we've got our 10 minute intervals. Our third question is from North Oxford Golf Club. They've asked, what is the best way to change your tee sheet from two balls to allow three or four balls? Very simply, you can go into the tee sheet settings and you can amend the players per time. If this is currently set to, to two balls on your tee sheet, you can change this to allow three balls or you can change this to allow four balls and press save. This change is immediate. So it may be the case that you want to allow three and four balls from a certain date, in which case you will need to add a tee sheet reservation and block out players three and four from booking up until your certain date. So if we quickly go to add custom reservation, in this example, we might go two balls only. Again, two balls only. The reserve slot count will be two because we are blocking out players three and four to allow players one and two to book. The dates here, let's say we're going to have this enforced from Wednesday the 3rd. So we are going to do the rule until close of play on the 2nd. And we're going to leave those times as they are. Press save and that adds it in until that date range, allowing two balls up until then and then three and four balls from then on. Our fourth and final question, kindly submitted by the Revenue Club. They ask, with two tee starts enabled, can the system handle one and two balls off the first tee at a certain time and three and four balls off the tenth tee at a certain time? The answer to this is yes, and I'm gonna show you how this works. First of all, we need to enable multi-start points in our tee sheet settings. So let's enable this to yes. We've got our set times. Brilliant, and we're going to press save. The next thing we need to do is we need to generate our tee times with two tee starts enabled. So we've already got June enabled. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another batch of tee times from July the 1st until the end of July with two tee starts. Same tee times available. Okay, tee time generated successfully. What that does, if we go to our tee sheet, it keeps the one T starts setting as it is what that we've been working through, like so. However, if we jump across to the 1st of July, this time we have two T starts enabled, so you can either book off the 1st or the 10th. Now, the easiest thing to do to set your restriction on one and two balls off the 1st and three and four balls off the 10th what we're going to do is from this section, you can actually create your own custom reservations. So what we're going to have is one and two balls off the first for the morning and three and four balls off the 10th. And then we're going to flip it round in the afternoon. So quite simply, we're going to click on seven o'clock off the first and add our reservation. two balls only. The reserve slot count will be two. And we're just gonna leave it as today. But obviously you can change that days of the week, the dates here and the times. The time we're gonna push until 12 o'clock and press save. Okay. 
okay? And that adds the setting in. So this now allows two balls off the first, player one and two here, and three and four balls off the 10th. Excellent, however, we need to flip that round in the afternoon. So let's scroll down where the rule ends. And from now, from 12.04 on the 10th, we are going to add another reservation. Two balls only. Two balls only. The reserve slot count again will be two. Again, you can change the days of the week and the date, which we're going to leave as they are for now. The end time in this scenario is going to be 6.30, the end of our T-sheet. Press save, and that will apply that rule and mean that three and four balls can play off the first, and now one and two balls can play off the 10th in the afternoon, like so. That concludes our webinar. I'm Alex Wood. Thank you very much for watching.